Welcome, loved ones. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for supporting us, subscribing to our channel, liking, sharing our videos. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button in the corner of the screen. Today, uh, my name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I took myself too fast there. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about soul loss. And lately, I've been listening to a lot of people talk about disassociation. And it varies from person to person, disassociation. But as many people I listen to that I realized they were experiencing soul loss. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is soul loss. Their disassociation is a soul loss. So let me uh, come here and talk about soul loss because some of us may be experiencing soul loss and don't even realize that we are experiencing it. All right. So let's just dive into what exactly is soul loss. You probably heard of that term and really didn't know what it was. You know, and just like I've, I've heard of soul loss, but I had never heard of disassociation. So when, the more I heard about disassociation, I guess because I'm so spiritual, I'm spiritual. When I started hearing people talk about it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's soul loss, girlfriend. That's soul loss, boyfriend. So I said, let me come here and talk about that. So here I am talking about soul loss today. All right. So soul loss is first and foremost an adaptive mechanism that usually serves by allowing us to cope in some situations, survive a terrible experience in which the disassociated soul parts depart, carrying the pain, the shock, the extreme emotion, or the memory of the trauma, which may be simply unbearable to the sufferer at, at the time it occurs. So it's a defense mechanism where we block off. We don't, we're not ready to feel that pain. We don't want to feel it, so we'll leave our body. Uh, we'll block it off so we don't have to feel it. You know, we'll suppress it in some, some way. But a lot of people, what I've seen in the severe cases in disassociation, where people leave their body, and that is where it gets very, very dangerous. It's very dangerous to do that. Symptoms of profound and ongoing soul loss frequently manifest as feelings of being fragmented, of not being all there. Some people think they're outside their body. They say it's like watching a movie. They don't even seem like it's real, you know. Blocked memory, not being able to remember parts of one's life, a sudden onset of apathy. And that's, that was me. I, I, I blocked parts of my life off. I blocked it off. So that, that, that's a mild symptom of it. But the severe symptom of it is being outside of your body. A sudden onset of apathy, a lack of joy in life, the inability to make decisions, the inability to feel love for others or receive love from others, often resulting in a sense of being emotionally flatlined. The loss of these parts of the self is often expressed as despair, as suicidal tendencies, addictions are most often depression so and that's what i look at depression too uh and the suicidal tendencies there's there's a sickness in the soul so there there has to be some psychological examination going on there to really get to the root of your problem if you're dealing with depression if you're dealing with addiction there's something else psychological going on there's some trauma that some of us don't want to look at you know, it is understood that this loss is only meant to be temporary, assisting the sufferer in dealing with the psychological aftermath of a truly shocking experience. Problems arise, however, when the soul loss becomes ongoing, even permanent, and disregarded as a primary cause of serious illness and possibly even premature death. Because what I've seen and I've heard people say, too, they've had some physical stuff wrong with their body and didn't know because they stayed outside their body so much. You know, they can't even deal with intense emotions or even know how they feel because they stay outside of their body. They're, they stay outside of their body so much. Some of them don't even know when they're sick because they stay outside of their body 
so much. And they some of them think that it's normal because they have experienced so much trauma in their life. They they don't they think everybody experience their lives this way of being outside of their body looking at a movie and that's just not true i thought that was just very extraordinary to me when i just start listening to people's uh you know describe their disassociation because mine was a lot of different from theirs let's go on so loss occurring in response to physical emotional or sexual abuse and molestation experienced during childhood during ruthlessly or being ruthlessly teased and bullied, a bitter divorce, a shock and betrayal, a sexual assault, a serious surgery, or a terrible car accident, just to name a few. So loss can occur whenever we have trauma in our lives. So any trauma, big or small, it can create a soul loss. All right, and this can happen at any age. Soul loss can occur at any age. And it can, you can retrieve your soul loss through soul retrieval when you're ready for it. And sometimes during the soul retrieval, we can remember a specific event in our life that changed us physically, emotionally, and mentally. And that you'll really find that it, when you're ready to deal with it, you'll find that in the soul retrieval process. Now, you'll hear about the soul retrieval because a lot of shamans, especially shamans like uh, with Sandra Ingram, they do soul retrieval work where it's a ritual where they go in and they recover your soul and give it back to you, which is a good ritual. It's traditional and can be very helpful, but it's a 50-50 chance that you may or may not receive the healing from that. You know, it just depends on how strongly you believe the shaman can help you in your belief system. That you believe that this will work for you. So that's why I say it's a 50-50 chance. Okay? Soul retrieval is a powerful spiritual practice that heals the soul loss. We realize we're ready to heal and be inspired to move on. However, there is a self-generated soul retrieval. It's about going back and to become aware of our past to release the frozen bound energy and release the mental pattern, which is diverting our creative life energy. So you can go back there and you can revisit that, that event and you can either feel the emotion because, like I said, the dissociation, it varies from person to person. So this would go for the people that's going outside of their body, staying outside of their body a lot. You can either go back and feel those frozen emotions uh, and release some of that, that bound energy, you know, whatever you have to do, because you'll probably be crying and grieving and purging a lot. Once you choose to sit, see, uh, go back and sit with those emotions, that's what you'll be doing. And then the release of the mineral pa mental patterns, which is diverting our uh, life, life energy. Now, this would relate to people that have that PTSD going on that keeps reliving the memory. All right. So a lot of that blocks up a lot of our creative energy, too. And that's what I've been. You know, I'm, I'm getting better at that. That's uh, for the most part that is healed. But that's what was one of my my issues. Once I started the healing process, I started realizing that I had PTSD that I wasn't dealing with. All right. So let's go on here. Once, you know, we start regaining ourselves and calling back our creative power, power. We are the ones that's doing what is necessary to be done because you're doing the work. Even if you did go to the shaman and the shaman did the ritual, you're doing the work because your belief and your faith is, is, is allowing this to happen. So you're actually doing the work. And actually, in any calling back of our creative power in any form is a self-generated soul retrieval. That's what I like about the Know Thyself program because once I start working that program, I start looking at aspects of myself that I needed to heal. So this is a form of soul retrieval as as well, working working and looking at your whole self and, and, and paying attention to yourself, bringing that awareness in on yourself. 
focusing in on yourself. That will spark a soul retrieval as well. Processing the energy would be to go back and deal with the pain and suffering suffering of the original trauma that caused us to turn our awareness off because it was so much we didn't want to think about it we didn't want to be there for it so we just checked out for it you know some of us have suppressed memories as well this is also what we do in the traditional soul retrieval like i said they go back and they they retrieve your soul that is the soul retrieval through it in, through the uh by the shaman which allows us to go back, bring the focus of our attention and awareness to the event to restore our life, even the properties, even given the properties and release the bound energy. So even if you did go to a shaman, it's like I said, it's like going to see a psychologist. They're going to take your memory all the way back to where you felt a change in yourself. You know, they're going to take you back to the trauma where that changed you. And you can do this as well. You can do this uh, as well yourself with the self-generated uh, soul retrieval if you're willing to look really look at your life when you're really because some people are not ready to look at their lives. They're not willing to see what's really going on because that would means that you will have to look at yourself. You will have to look at your friends. You will have to look at your family that's causing this soul loss. Some people are not aware of it. That's why I wanted to come here and talk about it today. All right. It is about bringing our physical life into alignment with the intention for our life. We need to realize the intention for our life is the source of our creative power in our life. And it is what has brought us into life and gives us life. So your creative power is everything. And your inner child is connected to your uh, cre creative power and your emotions as well. So when we avoid our emotions and, and we're not being there for our you know, for our emotional well-being, we're also abandoning our inner child. This is where the integration comes in at. When the higher self, the loving adult, comes in and talks to the inner child and compromises with the inner child and comforts the inner child and says, hey, I'm going to be there for you. So it's about connecting, too, with the inner child. Because most shamans, when they do this work, you know, they're they're going to come in contact with a child, an inner child, a, the small version of you. Because all of us have an inner child inside of us. And that's what's really happening when we fail to connect with our emotions. When we fail to validate this has happened to us, we have abandoned our inner child. So we're no longer nurturing and loving ourselves. That's where the self-care and self-love comes into play as well. Calling back our creative power and the journey of re reconstitution address, address the same types and kinds of issue in a parallel way. And each can be considered a discussion of the self-generated soul retrieval. We have the choice to act. To give ourselves permission for our heart to open to be able to have a self-generated soul retrieval. You have to be open to it, too, because you have to look at aspects, the darker aspects of yourself. So you'll see a lot of inner child work. If you're doing a self-generated soul retrieval, there's going to take some inner child work and doing some shadow work as well to get down. Because you're questioning your psychology, why you're doing the things that you're doing, why are you depressed, what's triggering the sadness. You start to pay attention. What's triggering the sadness? Who is triggering the sadness? Who, you know, how do you feel when you get around a certain person? Because sometimes we, we don't, we're not aware because we are disassociating. And so when you start the self-generating soul retrieval, retrieval, this requires your awareness, a lot of your awareness. This requires you paying attention to your emotions, to your thinking. And that way you can get to the bottom of of what's causing you to feel disconnected and disassociate. We need that open heart to guide us in the unknown and to explore the dark side of our being through what we 
we feel. We need to make aspects of our non-conscious conscious and bring the light of awareness as to what we have lost and why we have lost it. When the person chooses to call their soul back, gathering themselves up, Having their vital essence return, often they find that their current relationships may shift. You may need to go no contact with some family members or some friends that no longer serve you. Like I said, this is very deep core work. Being whole, we find ourselves in more moments of acceptance, grace, and peace. The results of soul retrieval are unique for everyone. You know, everyone is not going to be the same because I realized that when I got to talking about disassociation, none of us were the, the same. Even though we all had some form of dis disassociation, it was not the same. And many of our journeys different from one to the next, but we all have a common thread. It's, you know, when you talk to us, when I, well, when I began to listen I saw that we all had a common thread, but we all were unique as well. Being whole, we find ourselves in a more, oh, look what I say. Some people will experience joy, curiosity, expansiveness, enlightenment. Others will feel quiet, peaceful, a stillness. And during your soul retrieval process, you might, because you're going through so many inner shifts and you're getting to know yourself on a deeper level, you might be tired sometimes. That's why self-care is really encouraged. If you, you're going to be doing this work on yourself, a lot of self-care is going to be required. That means rest when you need to rest. That means treat yourself to something nice when you need to treat yourself. If you need self-love, you give yourself self-love. This is all about focusing on self and what self really needs and getting that soul to come back to you. You know, getting your soul, your inner child to open up to you again so you can nurture it again and, and, cre and creating that trust. So that soul retrieval be deals with the uh, inner child uh, inner child as well. I hope this video was insightful for you and it educated you on soul loss. I thank you so much for being here today. I'll leave a link here if you're interested in trying to do some work on yourself and you resonated with what I talk, talked about, I'll leave a link here to my course if you want to get on trying to do some healing on yourself. But I thank you for being here today, loved ones. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.